Okay, so it's great pleasure to have uh, Mustafa Korkmaz in today's Peak Anthropology Seminar. Uh, so Mustafa Korkmaz is uh, joining us from uh, Middle East Technical University, and uh, he's going to tell us about involution generators of mapping class groups. So please, uh, please, you can start. Okay, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, okay, let me write the title, Involution Generators. of mapping class groups. So let me start uh, what that is. So I will take S be a closed surface of genus G. Let me like this. So G is uh, okay. G is greater than zero. Uh, I will we will look at the uh, group of uh, diffeomorphisms uh, of or homeomorphisms. It doesn't matter. Dif orientation preserving diffeomorphisms of the surface. Uh, it's a too big, uh, too, uh, this group is too large. And the ones, if two different isms are isotopic to each other, then uh, they are the same for us. So we divide by this relation that two different isms, if they are isotopic to each, each other, they are equal. Uh, so I will, we will consider them equal. So uh, although this, uh, when this is a normal subgroup, so I name the diffeomorphisms. Uh, so I divide this big group by the group of diffeomorphisms isotopic identity. Uh, this is a finitely generated group, by the way. So this group is very large. It is infinite dimensional topological group. Uh, but this is, uh, we call this the mapping class group, mod S, mod S. The notation comes from the modular group. We will see in a moment. So it, it's all you can also see this as the uh, connected components of the different group. If plus this. So uh, in fact, uh, you can also write this as instead of differences, you can also write homeomorphisms, orientation preserving homeomorphisms of S up to isotopy. So that is the mapping class group. So this is uh, this group is uh, plays a, a very important role in low dimensional topology, especially recently uh, the structure of uh, four manifolds. We know how complicated that is. Um, so the structure of, of whole ma uh, whole four manifolds are somehow uh, encoded in these groups. So these are family of groups. Well, uh, sometimes you may have uh, you may have boundary components and punctures, but uh, I, in this talk we will have only closed surface. So I will not go into the applications. Well, of course, another application is about the three manifolds and Hashimoto's theory, etc. Uh, so I will be interested in the algebraic properties of uh, this group and uh, what the generating sets. So. Our aim is to talk about generating sets. Where is generating sets? So uh, this interest in, uh, so let me start from the beginning, what I will going to tell at the end, and then I will talk about the history. So our aim is to, to solve this. So uh, if G is greater than is at least eight, then this group, mapping class group, is generated by by only three involutions. So involution is an element of order two in a group. Uh, well, if also. Uh, it's also if G is at greater than equal to three, 
then uh, core involutions. Maybe, so I proved this this way, but uh, this instead of eight, also we can also take to be six. So one of my students uh, improved this result to six. Anyway, so another a corollary of this statement is that uh, so if you look at the action of the mapping class group on the first homology of the surface of S with Z coefficients, well, this has also a, a I should write the automorphism of this. Uh, there is also intersection pair. Uh, this is the symplectic group, SP2GZ. So, and that is onto. So the symplectic group is a quotient of the mapping class group. Well, maybe uh, we should take, uh, I should exclude the trivial cases. Anyway, uh, so that uh, this, since mod mapping class group is generated by, in, in the above cases, generated by three involutions, the, uh, this SP symplectic group with integer coefficients is generated by uh, three involutions. If G is at least eight, but at least six. So I, I don't know if this was known before, probably not. Uh, okay, uh, so let me see what is uh, a few groups. If G is zero by the Alexander theorem, the mapping class group is trivial. And uh, if G is equal to one, the mapping class group is uh, isomorphic to SL2Z, so that the, that's the name modular group also comes from this, this I guess. Uh, and uh, the people used to call Teichmiller modular group before for the mapping class group. Okay, uh, the first results on mapping class group was done by Max Dane. This is, uh, so I'll talk about a bit history also, the result, this, uh, well, recent and old results. Uh, about the generating the mapping class group. So Max Dane uh, in 1938 proved that uh, it is generated by, this group is generated by uh, 2G times 2G minus one, uh, uh, what we call the Dane twists. So let me see, say what, what the Dane twist is. So Dane twist is, so uh, let's take a surface, this surface. So if we have a simple closed curve, for example, this one or that one, it doesn't matter, one of them. So, so we have an orientation on the surface. So suppose that this outside is the positive orientation, the positive side of the surface. So when, if we have a simple closed curve like that, we cut the surface along uh, A and twist one of the side 360 degrees and glue it back. So for example, uh, if we have a curve like this, it's image under this, the, the, the interviews, the interviews, we, I will write the interviews, uh, we will denote the interviews by T A. So for example, the image of this curve will be uh, so outside of, uh, of a neighborhood of this curve A, everything is the uh, is fixed. And in a neighborhood, this curve is twisting like this. But that if this curve is let's say X, that is the image of uh, X under the thing to use about A. So finitely many of those things generate the mapping class group. Well, I guess after that, 
until uh, 1963, 62, it was somehow, I guess, forgotten this work and the licorice. Uh, through 1962 and 64. Uh, it's also generated by 3G uh, minus one day increase. First, he proved that it is generated by uh, day increase. And as a result, he concluded that every three manifold is obtained by uh, from S2. Uh, by integer surgeries. So the denkulus comes to correspond to the, the integer surgery. <laughs> well, uh, about the generating set, Humphreys, Stephen Humphreys, uh, he proved in 1979 that uh, uh, 2G plus one denkulus is enough. Well, uh, twists. So what are those the interviews? Let me say. So if G is, so we can always assume that G is bigger than two because uh, if, if we have torus, then it's mapping class curve is well known. Uh, okay, what are those the interviews? So if you take uh, maybe, if you take these, the danger is about these curves. So how many, this is 2G, this is 2G plus one. Uh, and so we can add, so if we also take these uh, uh, blue curves, so they, they, maybe I don't need the last one. Uh, so the is about all these curves generate that that's the uh, generating mapping class group that is the uh, result of licorice and Humphreys showed that these uh, blue curves uh, is not necessary so we can exclude them uh, in fact he showed that this 2g plus 1 is 2g plus 1 is minimum minimum so that means uh, you cannot generate the mapping class group by uh, 2G or less than twist. That is okay. That's it. Now, uh, now, uh, but uh, can you find the uh, smaller number of generating sets? So, what are the minimal generating sets, for example? So mapping class groups are they are uh, they are not uh, abelian, so that they cannot be generated by a single element. So they are not cyclic. Uh, they are not, they cannot be generated by uh, a single element. So it need at least three gen two uh, at least two in uh, at least two elements to generate the mapping class group. So well, let me see. Uh, let me say, tell you quickly how uh, easily we can get from this that mapping class could be generated by uh, four elements. So if we take, if we consider, uh, I need this picture later as well. So if we take the surface like this, if I take the surface like that, then if I say, if you take this curve, let's say A1, that curve is B1, this curve is C1, this is B2, C2, etc., and this is A2. So if you go like that, this is two A2 G, A, A G, sorry, uh, B G, and so that uh, remember uh, by the above, by, by the uh, Humphreys, the the Cornish Humphreys theorem. So the interval is about a one, uh, b one. So uh, b, maybe so b one, b two, b g, c one, c two, 
see G minus one, and A1 and A2. So in, it is about those curves generate the mapping class group. But if you take, uh, let's take R be the rotation by uh, pi over uh, G, to G, or G or to G, whatever, G, to G. So, oh, <laughs> so order is G. So, okay. So it maps A1 to A2, A2 to A3, A3 to A4, et cetera. So, so R maps A1, AI to AI plus one, BI to BI plus one, CI to CI plus one. So therefore it's, we can, we see easily that mapping class group is generated by, I mean, that's like that, uh, generated by this R, a is about A1, A is about B1, and A is about C1. But these are four elements generate the mapping class group. So we can, but that, that's it. Now, so, so I have a question. So CG, CG minus one is between uh, the last one. Okay, yeah. yeah. But when this you map, map it under rotation, where does it go? So you say it's going to C one. No, it is CG, which I did not take. Uh, in this picture, it maps to this curve. Okay. Uh, in the above picture, it should be. Oh, I see. Okay, CG is an element of the group. That's how we think of it. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, the twist about that curve is the in the in the group. Okay. Okay. Mustafa, uh, can you ask a question too? Sure. In this previous picture, you had the blue ones. So yes. you have all the blue ones, uh, except the three of them. Uh, so what are the curves there? The, the ones around? So for, for the generating set, we can omit these, we can delete these. Uh, you don't take ones. those. Oh, well, you can include or you can also delete as well. So, so these are, uh, mm -hmm. except one, one of them, except, except the one about going about the second ball. So you need to take only one like this. Yeah. Also, the the, the interview is when you explain it, it makes sense to that the before you do the, the interviews, it separates it into two circles. But if you take curves uh, like the around the loops, around the genus point, the holes, how do you do the interviews around them? Like the, the ones in the middle, are well, they- you, the, you mean around this? Uh, the, the ones around, you call B, B, I, I guess. Around this one, for example? Yeah, those are the ones that, yeah. Yeah, well, Maybe I should explain Dentivis a little bit more. Sorry, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no problem. So, so Dentivis is so. If let's consider S one cross I. Okay, is S one cross I. So I define a map like this. So first, uh, you define a Dentivis like this here. Okay. I, 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 can, I can write in coordinates, but I will not write. So image of image of this curve, uh, image of this curve is this one. So as you go right, so if you write the coordinate e to the i, theta and t, if you go to the right, second coordinate does not change, but the first coordinate is it changes by two pi uh, t uh, theta from plus or minus. I don't know which one at, at the moment. But uh, so once you define this, uh, so this different this is a homeomorphism of this analogous to each other, and it is identity on the boundary. Now, if you take uh, a neighborhood of this curve. Homeomorphic analysis. So in this analysis, 
I define the fairism as below and outside to be the identity. So that's a homeomorphism. Maybe perhaps it's not a diffeomorphism, but if you perturb it, it will be, it, that will be a diffeomorphism. Okay. That's the homeomorphism. So it doesn't matter. Uh, well, it, in R three, it's easy to, as you said, you know, to take the cut along this curve. But how do you cut the other one? So you just take a scissor and then cut along the <laughs> uh, along that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Oh. Well, the curve might be, of course, complicated. So, for example, uh, let me draw one curve here. So you can take the dangerous about this curve as well, exactly the same way, as long as it is a simple curve, simple and closed curve. That's the most. So, the, by the way, the, or, uh, the, the curves have no orientation. So, even if you write, if you give an orientation to the curve, it does not affect the, uh, to the intimus. It is right or left. It does, it does not affect that. It does not affect the definition. Only the uh, orientation of the surfaces matter, matters. Okay. Uh, Any other uh, questions? Yeah. So, in, in the image, do you mean uh, T plus theta or? Yeah, yeah, P plus no. theta, plus, plus, young, uh, so I wrote it, okay. uh, something like that, yeah. Uh, it is, I wasn't careful. Uh, yeah, I guess plus, yes. Yes. 2 pi t uh, plus theta pi, yeah. yeah. When t changes from 0 to 1, it changes from 0 to, so the exponent should change 0 to uh, 2 pi. OK. Uh, any other questions? I forgot to ask, you know, sometimes uh, I should stop sometimes if you have any questions, but uh... Uh, I have another one. So the, yeah. one, uh, so the action of the um, uh, mapping class group on the simple closed curves, for example, the one you draw, which is complicated, does it always go to something simple? Uh, uh, can you always map it to something simple? Uh, you, you mean uh, like the ones like the ones that are uh, the, the the ones uh, that are going around these. Um, so do you mean? Uh, I think the canonical canonical ones, these AIs and BIs. Can you just map this one for like a complicated, uh, complicated simple curves? Can you always map them to something yes. simpler? Yes, that's the classification okay. of surfaces. So if you take, so it just matters. You just look at the homology. Uh, well, the surface, uh, uh, subsurface. Uh, so you look at this curve. So if, if it is non-separating, okay, if the curve is non-separating, then the outside is co uh, connected, then it is, uh, you can always find the homeomorphism uh, of the surface uh, mapping that curve to this one or in, in, in any, any other one, any, uh, uh, any non-separating curve, okay? So if it is separating, you look at the, 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 the subsurface bounded by that curve. So, so let me write that one. So maybe, let me, for example, this is genus, let's say six curve surface. Then if, it, if, uh, if there is a non-separating curve, it is always, uh, there is always a diffeomorphism mapping that curve to this one. If it bounds a genus one subsurface, then uh, that is, uh, there is a uh, there is a homeomorphism that curve uh, or even orientation preserving one homeomorphism uh, mapping your curve to this one. Uh, if it is genus two, this one, genus three, etc., up to G. Okay, and okay, and then twist with respect to the original curve is kind of the conjugation. Yes. You, you can yes. obtain it. Okay. So if you have f of x is equal to some curve 
let's say a, then dangtus about a is dangtus about f of x, or this is the uh, f t dangtus about x and f inverse. So we have that relation. Okay, so you. here uh, I use the functional notation, namely, first I apply the uh, if we have the product of uh, two uh, homeomorphism, I apply the the rightmost first. Okay, I have to tell that. Okay. Oh, but by the way, uh, maybe I should say that one. So if we take two disjoint curves, two disjoint curves, then obviously the the uh, dangers about them commutes. So it doesn't matter which one you do first. And second, uh, if they intersect at one point, for example, these two curves, if uh, A and intersects, A intersects B transversely at one point, so transverse intersection, then uh, danger is about them satisfy this, uh, what's called the braid relation. Uh, TB, TA, TB. So th th these are like the, the, the relation uh, uh, in the symmetric group one, two, two, three, uh, one, two is equal to two, three, one, two, two. Okay, so that sort of relation. So if the supports are distrained, of course they commute. Uh, well, th these are the two interesting relations. There are other interesting relations which which I will not write now. <laughs> there are also uh, there are two more relations. One is called the uh, uh, torus relation, three or two of torus relation. Well, maybe I should tell that. So if we have a torus with two holes like this inside the surface, like this. So if these curves, these curves are, uh, let's say, A, B, C. Uh, so, so this. D and E are the uh, are hom uh, isotopic to the to the neighborhood of A union A union B and B union C. So in this case, we have this relation that T A T B T C to the four is T B times T E. But this is sort of a generalization of. Uh, this matrix one one zero one times one minus one uh, zero one times one one zero one in the in SL two Z its fourth power is identical. So sort of you can you can see this as a generalization of this one. <laughs> well, well, with this identity anyway. Uh, if this, you take them to be the identity. There's also one other uh, famous relation, which is called the lantern relation, which I, which I will not say at the moment, if I will say uh, if we need it. So these, uh, all these generators actually uh, gives the precise, uh, so the, the whole uh, relations in the mapping class group. Namely, all the old mapping class groups are uh, finitely presented. Not only finite generic, but, but finitely presented. But of course, the presentation does not give too much about the group. Other than perhaps the, the if you can compute just the first homology easily. Uh, we, we were able to compute the second homology from the presentation as well. But in general, I guess uh, it doesn't give too much information. Okay. Now, uh, 1996, uh, Weinrib showed that this is this group is generated by by only two elements. Above, I showed how it is it can be generated by 
four elements. Well, if you work a little bit, uh, a little bit more, you can show that it can be generated by three elements. That's easy. But for two elements, uh, uh, it is, uh, he takes these elements. Oh, I, I, we have to take all, we have to take all the, the uh, all the integers above in the generating sets. So, so the element is the product of the integers about these curves. So let's, let me say one, two, up to two G. Uh, well, we have the last two, uh, maybe this picture is not, maybe let me put another one, another genus here, so that this is 2G minus two, that's 2G. So you multiply them. So by the way, this is an element of 4G plus two, and the curve about, let's say this is A and B, T A and T B inverse. They generate the mapping class group. So these two elements generate the mapping class group. So, but, but the, the, that's the minimal gen, uh, generating set. But the story does not end there. The story continues. Then I was able to uh, show that instead of uh, this one, you can take a single element. So that was, I guess, this one. So you can also generate the whole mapping class group by these two elements. This was in about 2005. Well, uh, how about these are the generating sets, arbitrary generating sets. Now also you can ask, can it, can it be generated by torsion elements? But uh, that the first, uh, it was answered by McLachlan. Uh, it's written like this. <coughs> in 1971, I suppose. So he was uh, uh, showing that the moduli space is simply connected. Uh, along the way, first he showed that it is generated by finitely many, uh, many torsion elements. So an example of torsion element is this one, for example. That's an element of 4G. Uh, if this is, let's say, T, then uh, its order is 4G plus 2, by the way. Uh, finite many torsion elements. And uh, in 1987, uh, John McCarthy and Athanas Papadopoulos they showed that the in fact the mapping class group is generated by uh, involutions namely uh, there is an involution sigma let's say its normal closure is the mapping class group namely this normal closure uh, this involution and uh, it's all of its conjugates generate the mapping class group well, uh, that, this was this is infinitely many, and around 2002, uh, Frank Lu showed that uh, he showed that each thing to is uh, is a product of using the relation. Each thing to is non-separating. Uh, is about non-separating curve. Thing to is is a product of uh, 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 three commutators. Uh, no, not completely. Uh, six involutions. So, so that uh, uh, how many? So, two g plus one times six is twelve g plus six involutions generate mapping class groups. Involutions is enough. Uh, well, the question is, can you, can you find a universal bound on the number of involution generators? 
so by the way, uh, two torsion elements also generate the metal class group. That was a uh, result of mine. Uh, well, uh, this question, the, the minimum, the, the universal bound, bound for, uh, that was a question at the time. It was answered by uh, Brendel and Farb. And so far, uh, they showed that six involutions is enough. Well, what the, what they do is that you take they show that each uh, and they this is a product of four involutions, and they concluded they, they conclude from that. Now, uh, right after that, uh, it was. Uh, it's shown that it, it is generated by four involutions. But there are some bounds that G is at least some numbers, uh, something like five, six. I, 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 I will not uh, say that. So for big G, let's say. Big, I mean either four, five, six, up to seven. So Casabo, that's, that's Casabo. Around the same time, uh, he showed that four involutions is enough for. I guess G is at least seven. And uh, it wasn't, well, first of all, uh, mapping class group is, cannot be generated by generated by uh, two involutions. Because uh, if, if you have a, uh, group generated by two involutions is a dihedral group. Uh, it, it is virtually a billion. Uh, but mapping class group contains lots of free groups. Uh, so that uh, it cannot be generated by three involutions. So that the question is can it be generated by generated by three involutions? So that is, this was open about, uh, about, from, this was in 2006, I suppose, 2005, 2006. So for about 15 years, it was uh, open. And I answered this about 2000, in 2020, uh, that three involution if G is greater than equal to eight, three involution, involutions, uh, generate generate the mapping class group. Okay, well, how do we generate the mapping class group by three involutions? Uh, at least let me tell you what they are. <laughs> okay, so I, I cannot give the whole proof, but let me tell what they are. Uh, so we had this generating set above uh, mode Mapping class group as uh, mod S, sorry. We had this R, T, A1, T, T1, T, C1. So the, why? Well, uh, if you have two, uh, suppose we have two non separating curves, let's take that which are disjoint. For example, this one and that one, okay? So let A and B are disjoint curves. Disjoint curves. And for this surface, for, for, for this surface, if you take this involution like this, let's call this sigma, then the interview is about A. So uh, the sigma maps A to B, B to A. But uh, the, the TA times TB inverse, that is, I can write this as, this is just an example how to write uh, this uh, product of two uh, dangerous as a small number of uh, involutions. So that is, as we know, this is sigma A inverse, but uh, since sigma is, sigma is orientation preserving, everything is orientation preserving. This is TA, sigma TA inverse, 
sigma or sigma inverse. Sigma inverse is sigma. But now this is an involution. That's an involution. So that each such element can be written as a product of two involutions. Each such pair. Well, uh, you can do this even if instead of that p, you can also take that p as well. But the uh, involution will be different. Okay. Now, uh, let me let's look at this. Uh, we, we can first step uh, in uh, uh, my uh, result is that you can also generate this mapping class group by this R. Uh, by the way, this rotation R is a product of two involutions. That's why I use R. Uh, TA1 times TA2 inverse, uh, A2 inverse, sorry, like this. I will draw these pictures in a moment. Uh, B1 times B2 inverse, C1 times C2 inverse. So what are the, what are what they are? So what is R again, uh, Mustafa? Is yeah, that... I, yeah, I will tell. Uh, I'll, I'll tell now. <laughs> okay. R is uh, R is this rotation, like this, rotation by uh, uh, two pi over g. Yeah, now I got it. <laughs> two pi over g. Okay. So that the order is two g. The uh, order is g. Okay, that is uh, the rotation. Now, if we take uh, rotation, let's say row one about this line. So this is a uh, a one is here. Remember, this is a one. This is B1, that is C1, the curve C1. This is A2, uh, B2 here, that is C2, okay? Now, uh, so this is row one is rotation about this line, uh, that all pass through this origin, and row two is the rotation about this line, so that this R is uh, is a product of the row one and row two. It is probably it's row two and row one, but or or row one times row two. It, it doesn't matter which one. So that is the rotation. You can write rotation as a product of two involutions. Now R is a product of two involutions. This is two involutions. That is two involutions. That is also two involutions. So that I, we could generate mapping class group by uh, eight involutions easily after this theorem. Uh, but you can we can continue uh, further. Uh, let me draw the picture. What what are the generators? So for this, first we, we show the mapping class group is generated by uh, R, A1, uh, A1 is TA1, sorry. A2 inverse, uh, TA1, TB1, TC1, uh, C2, B, uh, uh, maybe, maybe, yeah, this is also true, but let me not write that one. Uh, this one, yeah. Row one, row two, and the interview is about B1, the interview is about A2. I will draw pictures of these curves in a moment. C3, C4 inverse, a six inverse and B seven inverse. Okay, what they are, what are they? So this is one involution, that's another involution. Uh, 
using the above theorem, uh, above I mean this theorem, uh, we can show that the mapping class group is generated by these three elements. Uh, So what are those shows? B1, that's B1. I take the positive twist about B1, A2, positive twist about A2, C3, C3 is this one, positive twist about C3, and negative twist about C4, uh, positive, negative twist about A6, and negative twist about B7, okay? So that is the uh, picture. And so why I took this curve, these curves, well, uh, if we, so they're all uh, distinct from each other. And also, if you say this guy as row three, row three maps this part to other part. Uh, okay, that's why if you, Put here row three. Row, by the way, row three is uh, the conjugation of row one by uh, R cube. So row one is remember this is this was the rotation about row one. So if you uh, rotate by three times, um, so we get row three. So uh, so once. Once we show that uh, mapping class group is generated by these four elements, uh, uh, for three elements, then I can include row three here. That also generates the mapping class group because row three is in terms of, this is uh, row one, row two cube minus three here, times row one and row one, row two to the minus three. So it's everything is in terms of row three. So row one, row two. And uh, one, well, I, I took these curves uh, this way so that uh, when you multiply by row three, it is an involution. So that these three involutions generate the mapping class group. Of course, I cannot tell the, the, the whole details, but that's the idea. And uh, uh, this is for, G is at least uh, six. I need uh, G is at least, I need another hole in my proof. But my uh, student, Oz Yildiz, uh showed that, uh, uh, he showed that right after that, uh, he can do this for G is equal to six and seven by similar ideas. And by the way, uh, the mapping class group, uh, so if uh, genus, is, genus is one or two, uh, uh, mapping class group cannot be, is, cannot be generated by involutions, cannot be generated by involutions. The reason is that uh, H1, in the if g is equal to one, h one is of the mapping class group is z twelve. Uh, in if g is equal to two, h one of the mapping class group is uh, z ten. So that abelianizations cannot be generated by involutions. So that the, uh, they cannot be generated by involutions. Well, if g is equal to three, four, and five, uh, we also have that the mapping class group can can be generated by four involutions. Is it is that is it it's, it's an open problem whether it can be trained by three involutions or not in those, in those cases. Uh, I guess I can stop here. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay. So, any any questions for Mustafa Hoja? So, why so do they? Uh, maybe as good. You go ahead. So the open questions are for G equals three, four, and five? Yeah, uh, it, it's not answered yet, yes. Th those are the remaining cases. Those are the remaining cases, okay. Yeah. 
Yes. So we have we have some room to show that uh, to play around that uh, you know that this you know without this. Uh, so you know, I I needed genesis of this a to show that this is uh, that generates the metric class flow. Thank you. So, uh, how do we know this generate the mapping class group? Okay, mm -hmm. uh, I showed that uh, using this about theorem. So, uh, how do you show this? So, uh, first of all, the first one I can see, but the second one, this product of six things, <laughs> how do you use that it uh, produces this TA1, TA2 prime? Yeah, uh, first you show that. Well, the product of row one and row two is R. No. Okay. So, uh, namely, we show that this is this this group is inside that group. Then, if we show that, then you are done. So, the R is there. R is product of row one and row two. So, you need to show one of them. Well, mm -hmm. if you show one of them, the other one more or less follows. So it takes a little bit while. It takes a couple pages uh, to about two, mm -hmm. two pages, I don't know, I guess. And lots of pictures, which I did not prepare uh, to show the pictures, the proof. Uh, I need to connect another computer. <laughs> it's OK. But right, so you show each of these generated by this product of six things, uh, TB1, TA2, TC3, and so on. Yeah. That's, and using uh, row one and row two. Uh, just a second. Yeah, yeah. So I, I can write, uh, not this one. Yeah. I can write uh, all, uh, all, everything above, Everything, this one, that one, and this one, as a, uh, I can get it from here. Mm -hmm. uh, it requires proof, of course. That is the uh, uh, main part of the paper. <laughs> so your intuition was to get one of each type, like one, the interviews around B, A, and A, and C. Like, would it work if you took the TA1, TB2, TC3? Like, is it because they are uh, uh, one each type or? Yeah, yeah. There, there, should, there must be one each type. Otherwise, the R, this row one and uh, row two does not change the type. It maps mm -hmm. A to A, B to B, C to C. So you must have at least one from each type. So there are other elements like this. You could have take one each type or? Is it just only one that works? Like B, A, C, is it necessary? Or it could be C, B, A, or like- No, no, they, they commute. One. They commute, you can write in any order. So mm, this this B1, A2, C3, they all commute with each other. I see. So, so one all, or, each order is that important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, perhaps you can take A, uh, A1, B2, I, I don't know that. I, uh, then you have to work out the details of the proof, of course. I see. Again. <laughs> but the idea is one of each type, and yeah. then the other side is the. Yeah. Two, the so by, by taking product of them, uh, you should you should cancel some of them. At this, you know, now we have uh, six positive, uh, uh, two po uh, three positive, three negative things, and then uh, somehow you should reduce it to to one one. And then to show that it, you can take the, them, to, them to be A1 and A2. It takes some time. It takes, uh, I have a page of uh, just pictures uh, mm -hmm. showing that. Uh, but what that does it use? Well, the above proof, the proof of this theorem, this theorem uh, uses, uh, uses lantern relation. But once you have this, uh, here, I don't use lantern relations anymore uh, using the above proof. We, I, I use the braid relations 
most of, mostly, of course, the commuting relations, rail relations and uh, commuting relations. Namely, if two curves are disjoint, uh, then you can do the dangerous in any order you like. Very nice. Okay, any other questions for Mustafa Oita? Okay, it seems like no other questions. So let's thank uh, for this very nice talk. Thank you very much. So usually if you're, in order to show that two elements, for example, they are conjugate each other, you, you need to find a homeomorphism mapping one of them to the other one. That's how I do it if you, th that's how the proof works. <laughs>